of the morning already. Already. I pray everyone had a restful night's sleep. Good morning, my big sister, Brenda. Hey, Sister Yvette. So, I've been up. And I know I posted I was going to talk about, good morning, Brother Freddie, Sister Mary. I was going to talk about Never Again, but when I started studying Never Again, I did not, I couldn't exhaust it. I just, I couldn't stop studying it. And, which means I wasn't going to be ready, right, this morning to really uh, teach on that to the level of the degree that I would want to. So, we're talking about more grace this morning. And when I speak of grace, I'm not speaking of the grace that only comes to save us. And I pray that just as sure, because then when I started studying that at 1 o'clock this morning, well, about 1.30, uh, that took on its own life. And then my study pad decided to lock up. And I lost a lot of my study notes. So we say amen to it all. We say amen. Jesus knows. It's his grace. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto my, our path. God, I pray that someone gains a greater understanding today of your grace. God, the purpose of your grace the expanse of your grace, the abounding purpose of your grace. God, in a greater measure, someone receives your grace for life, for eternal life, for daily life. So we bless your name this morning, and we love you, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Brother Nick. So, grace. Grace is what God gives us as a gift. Mercy is what God withholds from us as punishment. Often those words are used interchangeably, but they are different. They are different. Grace is what God gives us that we don't deserve. And mercy is what God withholds from us that we absolutely deserve. The word said, because the wages of sin are death, but the gift, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is eternal. That is his grace and his mercy in operation in the same scripture. And so we thank God, amen, Sister Yvette, you took the words out of my mouth, for grace this morning. We thank God that he gives us what we don't deserve, but he withholds from us what we do deserve, which is mercy, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, this gift of grace, is eternal. What I want to present to you today is that grace, if you can, I, I tend to be very visual when God shows me things he always often shows them to me in illustration or pictures so what I want you to hear this morning is think of grace as Jesus okay and think of mercy as God okay so we know that the scripture tells us because I want to I want to not try to go just from the top of my head or the word that's been hidden in my heart that I pray is on point but I want to read it from uh, the word the first thing I want us to understand is that grace is more than just for our salvation we know that Ephesians chapter 2 tells us but God being rich in mercy because of his great love for us which he so loved us that he gave his son that even when we were dead in our sins, dead in our trespasses, good God Almighty, he made us alive together with Christ by grace to which we have been saved. It is through the grace, this thing God gave us that we don't deserve, his son Jesus Christ, salvation through Jesus, a gift to us that he gave us that we 
don't deserve. We don't deserve that. We didn't deserve that. But he gave us Jesus. He gave us his son. His son said, I'll go. I'll go. Grace said, Grace said, I will go. Go. And mercy said, go. I need you to get this. This is just how as I began to study the word of God over the years, looking at grace, looking at mercy, trying to understand them differently, and favor is at a whole nother level. Listen, I want to say this. I'm going to drop it right here. Favor... When, when, when uh, my other spiritual father, who he don't know that he is yet, uh, Bishop Jake said, favor ain't fair. It's really not. It's really not. But, but God does give favor discriminately, but he does not give grace discriminately. Hello, somebody. Grace he gives as a gift to everyone according to your ability to receive it, to handle it, to um, manage it, uh, to know, to appreciate it. So he gives each of us grace. Good morning, Sister Pamela. Good morning, Sister Cynthia and Sister Boxley. So he gives us this grace. He gives us this grace. And so he tells us that this grace comes through Jesus Christ. And this, why, this is why it's important. Yes, we know these three are one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. First John tells us these three are one. These three were in heaven. These three are one. I Listen, I get it. But I want you to start seeing this grace that went to the cross for you. His name is Jesus. That's, that's the grace that God sent in the name of his son, Jesus, for you. If it was just you, you need to understand. If it was just you, Jesus would have came. Somebody needs to say, if it was just me, Jesus would have came. He would have taken every stripe. He would have taken, hallelujah, the nails in his hands, in his, in his wrists, in his feet. Hallelujah. He would have taken the piercing in the side. He would have taken every whip if it was just you because he so loved the world. That he, Jesus, God said, I gave my son. And Jesus said, I'll go. Grace is the manifested presence of Jesus. The Bible talks about the mercy seat. That you can find grace at the mercy seat of Jesus. The mercy seat of God. And it is at the mercy seat that everyone who is not a believer will be judged. Good God Almighty. Those of us who are in Christ, when he cracks the sky, we're going to be judged by Jesus. We're going to be judged by Jesus. Hallelujah. So because we are in Christ, this grace that has been given to us, there, there is a grace, the Bible says, in John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For the law was given to us through Moses, but grace and truth was given to us through Jesus Christ. I just need you to understand, the grace that you walk in comes through Jesus. The grace that you receive, what we don't deserve, came through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Upon your confession of faith, this grace, this grace was given to you. This grace was given to you. And so what all does this grace allow us to do? We, we're going to look at Titus 2. I'm going to look at Titus 2 starting about verse 11 through about verse 14. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to jump around to several scriptures to just support this grace you've been given. So you can be encouraged this morning. I needed to be encouraged this morning. I told my sister yesterday, I've been feeling some kind of way and I don't really know what I'm feeling because it's not normal for me. It's not normal for me to feel what I'm feeling and I can't quite put my finger on what I've been feeling. Good God Almighty. And so this grace, this grace, I, I needed to be encouraged this morning by the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God that was shed abroad for me and for you. So Titus 2 says it like this in verse 11. He said, for the grace of God that brings salvation. We know that grace brings salvation through Jesus Christ and has been a given, appeared 
to all men. Now you got to receive this grace. You don't just get it dropped on you. Let me let me help you. Old Testament says it like this. I give grace where I choose to give grace. I give mercy where I choose to give mercy. That is what Jesus God said. I give it where I choose to give it. I withhold it where I choose to withhold it. This is why the sun shines on the just and the unjust. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Harrington. So this is what God tells us. He said, but this grace teaches us all teaches us to deny ungodliness, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Did you know that grace can help you not to sin? Grace can help you not to sin. It says, it's this grace, it's this grace that teaches us, that teaches us to deny ungodliness. It is the word that leads us in to all truth. It is this grace it is the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth, that teaches us all things, okay? Was it not Jesus who left us the Holy Spirit as a teacher? Good God Almighty. Good morning, Sister Janet. Good morning, Sister Cynthia. It is God who does these things. It is, it is Jesus, and, and, and you see, I'm doing it interchangeably, right? And so it is Jesus. It says, it is this the grace of God, Jesus, that brings salvation that is appeared to all men that teaches us to deny ungodliness, good God Almighty, and worldly lust. Uh huh. So we should live soberly, meaning in, in our right mind, righteously, because we are the righteousness of God if we choose to be, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, who gave us himself as grace, that we might be redeemed, okay? And we would be purified in him, zealous for every good work. Okay, let me help you. If he, uh, 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 um, uh, Corinthians, good God Almighty, tells us that all grace may abound, giving us the grace that all grace may abound unto us so that we will have everything that we need at all times, always abounding in every good work. The grace of God helps us to do the work of God, helps us to do the ministry of God, the service of God that he has sent you to do, that he has called you to do, that he has placed in you to do. It is the grace of God that leads us into this knowledge and this truth and this love, God Almighty, of Jesus Christ. So it's more than just salvation that his grace is good for. Now, let me drop this right here because my name in Swahili means grace. Now, Ernest George Tate did not know when he named me Tuesday that my name means grace in Swahili. He did not know that. He didn't know I was going to need all the grace, good God Almighty, that I needed in my life. He didn't know. He didn't know that as, as a teenager into my uh, uh, young adulthood and, and some parts into my adulthood that I would have the struggles that I had. He did not know that I was going to need the grace that I needed to live and to walk this life, to live and to walk out this calling, to live and to walk out, oh, shay, God, all the waiting. He gives us grace to wait. Good God Almighty. He gives us grace to wait. So I want to just help you to understand some of the things that grace comes to help you do today. Comes to help you to do. It says... It says um, in, in Hebrews chapter 2, the word says, um, hello, Lord, what do you want me to say? He crowns you with glory. He crowns you with glory and with honor because of the suffering of death. We all got to die to something. We all got to die to something. And the word tells us that he crowns us with his glory. He crowns us with his glory and, and with honor. Listen. Because of the suffering. So before you go into the suffering, 
You've already been crowned with his glory. You've already been crowned with honor. You just come out with more glory. You come out with more honor because you made it through. Good God Almighty. Woo, I need this. This is for me this morning. Jesus, help us, God. So he said, because of the suffering unto death, the things that you are going to have to go through. He said, he's going to crown you with glory. He's going to crown you with honor. He said, so that by grace, by the grace of God, you might taste death for everyone. But you see him for a little while and be made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, Crown Jesus, I'm Jesus crowned with glory and with honor so that he could taste death for everyone. So that Jesus, and just like him, we got to put on our glory, we got to put on our crown, we got to die to some things so that others will see the, the grace, the love of God through his glory and through his honor in us. He said, Now listen, so that by the grace of God, by the grace of God. This grace of God. See, see, you're saying, well, Tuesday, you're saying, well, how is Jesus the grace of God? But then it says here in Hebrews 2 that by the grace of God, he, Jesus, would taste death for everyone. So, so how is that possible? Well, here, grace means love. The grace of God here in this scripture uh, means in Greek, in, 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 it says, the grace, so that the grace of God, the love of God, might taste death for everyone. So, God so loved, right, that he gave his son, right, uh, that uh, uh, we know that, that John chapter 1, that says he, um, that um, Jesus, uh, now in the flesh, hallelujah, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. It goes on to tell us about the love of God. This love of God that's been shed abroad, that is Jesus. He is still grace, but that word means love. Jesus, God literally sent love. God literally sent love. He sent grace. He sent love for you and for me because he so loved us. God is love. He sent love. Love produced from him. Jesus Christ. He sent love. Peter goes on to say it like this. Peter chapter 2, verse, verses 3 and 9. I think sometimes we forget how even when scripture doesn't tell us that it's grace, we forget the different things that grace is demonstrated in our lives. Second Peter says it like this. The Lord is slow to anger to fulfill his promise. Because we count it as him being slowful, but no, what he's being is patient. He's being patient so that all will come to the knowledge and the truth of Jesus Christ. So that all will come to the knowledge and truth of grace. Of grace. That's the grace of God for him to be patient with us. For him to be kind to us. It is the grace of God that we are even awakened every day to see God's new mercy. With holding from us what we deserve, but giving us, hallelujah, giving us what we don't deserve. Withholding from us what we do deserve, mercy, and giving us what we don't deserve. So that those new mercies every day, that's grace. That's grace. Ah, walking in grace. Being loved by grace. Being kept by grace. Being favored by grace. Good God Almighty, the grace of God today. You got to walk in the grace. You got to receive the grace. You got to know that grace is in you. And you can be gracious. You can be kind to somebody. You can be loving to somebody. You can be patient with somebody because grace is in you. The word tells us, hey God, we know this one. We all quote this one in Lamentations chapter 3. He said it's because of God's loving kindness. It's because of God's loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because it is because of his compassion that never fails. Let me just talk through that right quick. His loving kindness, his loving kindness, this is his loyal love. This is his agape love. This is his, his grace. This is his grace. This is his grace. His, this is loving kindness is his grace. 
His loving kindness, because of his loving kindness, because his loyal kindness, his agape love, his grace, Jesus Christ, that we are not consumed. Y'all know y'all should be consumed. Because I know I should be consumed. Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. Good God Almighty. Then he goes on to say, because of his tender mercy. Because of his tender mercy. Because of his tender compassion towards you and towards me. That's his mercy. That never fails. Your love never fails. Never gives up. Never runs out on me. That's what the song says. Your love never fails. Never gives up. Never runs out on me. That's his mercy. That's his grace. Ah, that's the love we need this morning. To be reminded of the goodness of God this morning. It is this love. It is this grace. Hallelujah. The word tells us in Peter chapter 3, we are to grow in grace. We are to grow in this understanding of Jesus Christ. We are to grow in this knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ, of his grace. He wants you to grow in that. How do you grow in grace? How do you grow in grace? You got to get the knowledge of it. This is what we're doing this morning. You got to get the knowledge of God concerning his grace. You got to get an understanding that it's not just unto salvation, though that's glorious. That's what we all need for eternal life. We need grace. You can't even come to God through unless you go through Jesus Christ for eternal life. You can't come to him without his grace. You got to go through Jesus. You got to go through grace to get to eternal life. You got to go through Jesus. And beyond that. Grace is used to help us to live a godly life, to say no to sin. I need it. You need it. Sometimes call on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, send me your grace. Holy Spirit, bring me grace this morning. Stir up grace in me to give me strength to stand against that thing, to stand up under these temptations. I need your grace. I need your grace to keep my hands clean and my heart pure. I need your grace so I don't cuss them out. Good God Almighty, I need your grace so I don't leave my husband, so I don't leave my wife. I need your grace so I don't beat my child down. Good God Almighty. Lord, I need your grace. Grow in grace. Grow in grace through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what 2 Peter tells us. 2 Corinthians verse 9 says it this way. For it is God who is able, I said this earlier, to make all grace abound unto you so that you will have all sufficiency in all things at all times for every good work. Somebody say, I need your grace. I need your love. I need your power. I need your strength. Good God, I need your grace, God. I need your grace that brings wisdom. Everything that is in Christ. Remember, Christ is grace. Jesus is grace. I need your grace. I need your wisdom. I need your knowledge. I need your understanding. I need your peace. Yes, I need your salvation. I need your grace. Grace, grace to it is what they said in the Old Testament. Ah, when they was trying to get victory, they said grace, grace, grace to it. Put grace on it this morning. Put Jesus on it this morning. I tell everybody, if you don't know all the Hebrew names, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tiskanu, Bel El Perizam, Adonai. If you don't know all them names, Jeho Jira, uh, Jira, Jehovah Jira, Jehovah Adonai. Oh my God, if you don't know all them names, just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. If you don't know all those, because all those names are wrapped up in Jesus. All those names are in grace. All those names are in representing the love of God. Uh, it's that grace. It is found in grace, your forgiveness. Did you know that? Did you know that grace in grace is found your forgiveness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word says in Romans chapter 3 verse 24, it says, and we are justified by this gift of grace. Justified, I'm forgiven by the grace of Jesus Christ, by the redemption, by the salvation, by the blood. Oh my God, something just went literally just shot through my body. I am forgiven by the grace of God. Hallelujah. 
I'm forgiven by the grace of God. I'm forgiven by Jesus Christ. Oh, this solidifies it for me. The grace is through Jesus. The grace represents Jesus Christ. I am forgiven by the grace of Jesus. He said, I'm justified. Oh, God. Hey, hello, shop. I'm justified by this gift of grace that came through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm justified just as if I never did it. Just as if I never sinned. Just as if I never had that thought. Just as if you never gave your body to that thing. Just as if you never picked up that joint. Just as if you never stole that thing. Just as if you never hit that pipe. Just as if you was never nasty to your spouse. Just as if you never cheated on them. Don't go back to doing none of these things. Oh, it is the grace that saves us. Hey, God, it is your grace that keeps us. Hey, just as if I never did it. Just, 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 just as if I never did it. Good God Almighty, I thank you this morning, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Woo! Woo, Jesus. Jesus, I got the fan on me and that just it made me hot. Good morning, cousin. Hiya. Good morning. Hey, God, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace that keeps me, your grace that covers me, your grace that forgives me, your grace that leads me in all truth, your grace. Your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace. I need your grace. More grace, more grace, more grace, more grace, more grace. Hey, an abundance of grace. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Good morning, Brother Jones. Good morning. Brother Pinnell. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. The grace, the grace, the grace, the grace of God. Hallelujah. The grace of God. John 1 says it like this in verse 16. 16 it says, For out of his fullness, his superabundance of his grace and his truth, we all receive grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. What does that mean? What do you mean I'm receiving grace upon grace? We go from faith to faith and glory to glory. But what do you mean? I receive grace upon grace. Every spiritual blessing, Ephesians 1 says, that's been granted unto you. Every spiritual blessing. So I receive grace upon grace, favor upon favor, gifts heaped upon gifts. What are you saying? What are you saying? Every spiritual blessing, God has it for you. You don't have to you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fret about it. Grace upon grace. Somebody, I need grace upon grace. We know how terrible we can be. We know how terrible our life can be. We know how struggles and, and life struggles come upon us. Stop saying stuff like if it ain't one thing, it's another. Just stop it. You start saying, okay, here's some kind trying to come up on me. I need some more grace. I need some more grace. I need grace upon grace. Good God Almighty. That's what you need today. Grace upon grace. Hallelujah. That's what John 1 tells you. Grace upon grace. But we're remembering grace is not just unto salvation. We are thankful for that. But God gives us grace. He gives us grace to be strengthened. And this grace, the fullness, the superabundance of his grace. Ah, we all have received it. Grace upon grace. You got more than enough grace, beloved. You just got to stir it up. You got to stir up Jesus. You got to stir up the Holy Spirit. Ask him. God, send your grace. Stir up your grace in me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are forgiven by this grace. Romans 5.20 says it like this. The law was given to us so that trespass might increase. Now, I know that sounds crazy. Don't that sound crazy? So that sin, the law was given so that, listen, huh, huh, Jesus. He said the law was given, hey, God, so that trespass, so that sin would increase. Why in the world would God want sin? 
to increase. He said, so where sin increases, grace increases much more. I need to read it to you in the Message Bible. In the Message Translation. Translation. It says it like this. Good morning, uh, First Lady, uh, Sister Joyce Hudson. It says, all that passing law, all the laws passed against sin did was to produce more lawbreakers. All those laws, though, all those laws in the Old Testament, all it did, the Bible says, was produce more lawbreakers. But sin, sin didn't, and it doesn't have a chance. Sin does not have a chance, and it cannot compete against grace. Whatever the struggle is in your life, whatever the thing is that you feel like I don't, ha I have that can't help it. Oh, God, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for switching up this word this morning. God, I pray that somebody understands this grace that has been given unto them. Oh, God. He said grace does not have a chance. I'm sorry. Sin does not have a chance. It cannot compete against the grace of God. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, the grace of God that has an aggressive forgiveness. Ha! With all grace comes a, a, an aggressive forgiveness. Listen, what's your struggle? What's your struggle? Y'all need to be tagging somebody. Y'all need to be sharing this because we all know somebody that's in a struggle. We all know somebody that's in a struggle of fornication, adultery, drugs, alcohol, depression, whatever it is, they're in a struggle. Lack, they're in a struggle. Don't know what their purpose is, but the grace of God this morning. He said, it, he said, sin, sin ain't got nothing down on the grace of God. You ain't got nothing down. You ain't got nothing down on the grace of God. You ain't got nothing down on my Jesus. Devil, sin, you ain't got nothing down on Jesus. Ha! You ain't got nothing down on him. It says, because this grace, this is the amp, this is the message Bible for Romans chapter 5, verse 20. He says, listen, when sin when it's sin versus grace, they in a comp, they in a battle. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Muhammad Ali against Holyfield. Ha! Muhammad Ali against George Foreman. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, for real. He said, when it's sin versus grace, grace gonna win all the time. Grace gonna win hands down. <laughs> But should we go on sinning so that more grace shall abound? Absolutely, positively not. Hey, Sister Reed. Hey, Sister Sanders. Sanders. Good God Almighty. Grace is going to be, he going to come after sin aggressively and he going to win. All you got to do is say, God, I need your grace. I need your grace concerning this thing. I know this is wrong. I don't want to keep doing this, God. I need your grace. Send your grace. Good God will stir up your grace in me, in me, in me. He said, hands down, grace going to win every time. He said, all sin can do, good, hear this, hear this, beloved. He said, all sin can do is be a threat to you. Temptation, a test. He said, all it can do is be a threat to you. It threatens us with death. Because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. I came that you, that the grace of God would be given unto you abundantly. That in all things, at all times, you would have everything you need to do every work unto God. Good God Almighty. That's some good stuff. That's good for me. Shoot, I'm going to give myself a seed. Woo, this is good. Hallelujah. This is good. Good for my soul this morning. So he says, mm, mm, mm. so God invites us into this life, into this life of victory, into this life of grace, into this life of knowing that sin ain't got no control over you. God invites us. Now, how can he be talking about what Jesus is doing as the grace of God and then refers to himself? Because God is mercy. And Jesus, hey, Sister Kimby, and Jesus is grace. He said, it's this grace. It's this grace. He said, I'm inviting you into this life, into this life that goes on and on and on. Grace upon grace. Hallelujah. Ah, mercy upon mercy. 
He said, this is the grace. This is the grace. Good morning, uh, big brother Paul. He said, this is the grace you need. He said, he says in Ephesians chapter 4, he says it like this. But grace was given to each of us as a gift. Okay, let's, let's talk about this. Grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? I said this a little earlier. Grace is not given discriminatory, meaning he doesn't discriminate with his grace. He don't. That, that scripture right there in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, so this grace is given to us. He says, uh, it doesn't mean uh, it's given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So the gift that Christ left us was the Holy Spirit, right? That's the gift he left us. And it says that this gift of grace is given to us through Christ's gift. So what, what does he mean? What does he mean? This grace is given to us differently. He doesn't, he doesn't give Sister Kimmy more than he gives Brother Paul. He doesn't give uh, Brother Paul more than he gives my, Brother Nick. He doesn't give Sister Yvette more than he gives Sister Teresa. He doesn't give uh, Sister Cheryl more than he gives Sister Reed. He, don't, he doesn't do that. He's not, he doesn't discriminate. Hallelujah. Sister Joyce don't get more than Sister Hampton. No, no, he doesn't do that. But what he does give discriminately is favor. The Bible says that when you humble yourself, God grants favor. So the more humble you become, the more favor God gives. I hear you. I hear you, God. Okay. I hear you. Somebody's saying, God, how much more humble do I need to get? I've given up this and I've given up that and... I see other people prospering. I see, hey, I see this person getting married. I, I see this person going on great vacations and I don't have two pennies to rub together. I, ah, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm, I got sickness in my body. Got a family member who's struggling with sickness. How much more humble? How much more humble do I need to get God? Because before your favor comes, and I hear the Lord saying, mm, mm, Don't measure my favor by material things. Hey, 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 Shaba, hey, don't measure my favor. Ah, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't measure my favor by what a person's money can do for them. Hallelujah. Don't measure my favor. Oh, shit. By Satabosha. Hey, Saba. Don't measure my favor by who's getting this calling and that calling. Oh, shit. Don't measure my favor by how many likes you got on a post. Don't measure my favor. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Don't measure my favor by material things, the Lord is saying this morning. Don't measure my favor. Looking at what this one got and what that one has and what you don't have versus what hasn't come. What hasn't come to you yet, God said. Don't measure my favor. Mm. If you bow down, my pastor said. Wrote a song and sings a song. If you bow down, hey, way down, you see things that you've never seen. Good God Almighty, don't ooshe. When you bow down, when you, hey, God, Jesus is Lord, ooshe. When you bow down, I know you're saying, how much, whoo, how much lower do I have to go? God said, whoo, you're going to spring forth like that palm tree. You're going to spring forth like that bamboo tree. Hallelujah. Out of nowhere, you're going to spring up. And it won't be because of what your money got you. It won't be because of what... 
man did. We thank God for open doors and divine connections. But God wants somebody to hear this morning. He's for you. He's not just with you and in you. He's for you. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's his grace that comes to heal. It's his grace that comes to set you free. It is his grace that comes to make you whole. We thank you God for your grace this morning. Oh God. Favor ain't fair, T.D. Jake said it. That's because God discriminates with his favor. And I declare favor over everyone under the sound of my voice. That's put a, a, a thumbs up. That's put a happy face. That's put a love. That's Because that's your way of praising him when, when we're doing these teachings. Hallelujah. I speak favor over your life this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God, I speak favor pouring down. For everyone under the sound of my voice who's listening to this live, who'll come back around and hear it, who's being tagged, God, who this is being shared with, oh God, I thank you, Lord, I thank you for your grace this morning. It is the grace of God that God wants you to excel in. Excel in the grace of God. Hallelujah, God, according in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Excel in the grace of God. Excel in the love of God. Excel in understanding this grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, according to Romans chapter 6. God wants you to continue in grace. Hallelujah. Continue in grace. Don't let grace drop. Don't let grace drop. Don't let grace drop. Don't let grace drop. Hallelujah. My birthday is May 5th. Hallelujah. And I just told you that my daddy named me Tuesday. He didn't know that my name meant grace in Swahili. And years ago, the Holy Spirit told me when I was in the midst of a struggle, literally losing my mind and suicidal. It was grace that kept me. And the Holy Spirit told me one day in my bed, he said, hey, God. He said, from birth, from birth, goodness and mercy has followed you. See, because for those of you who don't know, the number five represents grace. And ten represents the wholeness of God, the mercy of God. Grace above grace. Hey, Shetobosaya. Oh, God, I speak grace upon grace from grace. I speak grace upon grace upon grace upon grace for your children this morning, for your sons and your daughters. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus, the grace of God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord said grace and mercy has followed you all the days of your life, girl. It ain't nothing about you. It ain't nothing about you. It's been my grace that has followed you all the days of your life. It is my mercy. Hallelujah. That you were not consumed by that. You weren't consumed by help me somebody. Oh my God. Somebody get this. You weren't consumed by that disease. You weren't consumed by that lack. You weren't consumed by that comp uh, depression. You weren't consumed by those drugs. You weren't consumed by being locked up. You weren't consumed by those lies and those rumors. You weren't consumed, hallelujah, by that bad toxic relationship. It is for his grace that you weren't consumed. Good God Almighty. I always say Jesus is a keeper. Hallelujah, it is Jesus, Jesus, the grace of God. The grace of God, Jesus, that you are kept. It ain't by your strength, it ain't by your power. It ain't by your might, it is by his grace. It is by his spirit. Woo, good God almighty. Hallelujah, grace gives you strength. Grace gives you strength. We already know that 2 Corinthians tells us that. It is his grace that is sufficient for us so that when we are weak, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're made strong through his grace. Second Timothy verse one says the same thing. Hebrews 13 verse nine says the same thing. God wants more grace to be given unto you. He said, I want more grace to be given unto you. He said, I want more grace, more grace. First Peter chapter five says, I want more grace to be given unto you. How do you get it? By being humble. 
He said more grace is given to the humble. He said, but that grace in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 15, is the favor of God. More grace, grace upon grace, favor of God, grace upon grace, the favor of God, goodness and mercy. Listen, when 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 goodness and mercy follows you, that means the favor of God is following you. Grace and mercy have kissed. Grace and mercy have become partners. Grace and mercy are taking a walk behind you. Grace and mercy. Hallelujah. You need to grab a hold of grace and mercy. They're like salt and pepper. They're like butter and bread. They're like water and lemon. They're like uh, cream and sugar in your coffee. Good God Almighty, grace and mercy. Grace and mercy, grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're stalkers this morning. Grace and mercy is a stalker over your life. Good God on mercy. Ha, ah, y'all are both safe. So, so Jesus, the word says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 15. Oh my God, I just saw that. Five, oh my God, chapter, no, no, no. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. I just saw that, y'all. 5-5, five, five, my birthday. Good God Almighty. He said, more grace will be given to you who is humble. Who is humble. The favor of God will be given to you who is humble. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Humility ain't got nothing to do because you sitting uh, like this. And looking solemn. That ain't got nothing to do with humility. Humility is a heart issue. Humility is a heart condition. You don't prefer yourself over other people. And we can all get such a much. We can all bump our head. But, but don't walk in that. When you feel it, you, you put that down. You say, no, 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 no. I will walk in humility because the grace of God and favor of God is on my life. I went to a church on Sunday evening and it was a pastor's anniversary. A, 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 a man of God that I certainly respect and admire and love as a brother in Christ. So I went to his church. So um, I just walked in and grabbed a seat. Now several of those ushers knew who I was. But ain't nobody tripping. I sat in the back. I can hear the word from back here. I can get worship from back here. Now, because I am a front row seater, not because I think I'm privileged, right? I just like to be close to the anointing. I just like to be close to the word. When it's good preaching, you can, your sweat can fall on me, honey. That's all good to me. That's like, geez, that's like Paul. Hallelujah. And so the word of God says, so I had the privilege of going and I sat in the back. So one of the sisters came to me. She said, why, why are you sitting back here? I said, I'm good. I'm cool. I can sit back here. She was like, no, 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 no. You need to be up front. Pastor will want you up front. I said, I don't know. I thought to myself, I don't know anything about if the pastor will want me up front. But amen. So I, I sat up there, enjoyed the worship. It was blessed. But, but not preferring others. That's humility. Preferring others before you prefer yourself. Okay, so this grace that comes, whoo, this has been a good word for me this morning. This grace that comes in Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Y'all, I'm about to just, just totally tear this word apart. Hallelujah, because I'm just noticing this is my birthday. Grace upon grace. He said it's this grace, this favor of God that is given to the humble. Good God Almighty. Yes, yes, yes. And so Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 says, you are called by grace. So we know we are strengthened by grace. We are saved by grace. We are called by grace. Hallelujah. We are to excel in grace. We are to continue in grace. Grace upon grace is available to us. All of this grace that comes through Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Somebody should feel better about the grace of God that is given to you. It is the grace of God, Titus says, that helps us to say no to sin. Will you fall short of the glory of God? Absolutely. Will you say things that you probably should not say sometimes? Absolutely. Will you feel ways that you shouldn't feel about people? Yes, you will. But God said it is his grace that sustains you. It is his grace that keeps you. It is his grace that is the forgiving power and nature of Jesus Christ. Within grace, combined, that comes with grace, is his forgiveness. So don't allow the enemy to beat you up because you fell short. We already know that the word tells us it is the grace of God that we are saved and we are forgiven. So do we go on sinning so that more grace can abound? Absolutely, positively, certainly not. But when you fall short, God, I need your grace. 
I need your forgiveness. I need your strength. I need you, Lord. I need you to help me. I want clean hands and a pure heart. I desire a soul that is not lifted up to vanity. Who can enter his temple? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart and whose souls are not lifted up to vanity, who are humble, who recognize. You see, we don't have to go after humility just so that we can get favor. The more you deny yourself and die to stuff, humility comes. Dying to being preferred. Dying to have your name called. You know, we can get such a money. I said it, you know, hey amen. I'm sure, I, I know I have been there. Like, wait, wait a minute here. And then God pulls me back down. I know, I know, I know. How much more humility do I have to bear? How much more do I have to die to as I see other people prospering? David said, I would have fainted. Had I not believed that I would see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living, that I would see the grace of God in my life, I would have fainted. I would have fainted. Don't faint. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. There is a due season if you faint not. God is Jesus is going to come. Grace is going to come and be bestowed upon you. Be encouraged this morning. God loves you. I pray that someone received a greater understanding of God's grace. There's more to grace than salvation. And we thank God for the salvation, the blood of Jesus Christ, for the redemption, the forgiveness, the full payment of our sin. But after you get that grace, there's more to come. It's just as one of the things I think we don't realize is that salvation is in three parts. You are saved, you're being saved, and you shall be saved. You are saved, salvation. You are being saved, uh, but, 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 sanctification, and you shall be saved, justification. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I thank God that you, wo you woke with me this morning for 5 a.m. fourth watch, power, prayer, teaching. I love you with the love of the Lord. The Lord says the same. I'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you, Evangelist Johnson, always for your prayers. I always go back and read them. Thank you all for joining me. I'll see you next week.